Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to this video on indirect object pronouns in French. Before you carry on watching, do make sure that you're familiar with subject pronouns and direct object pronouns because you will need to understand those in order to understand these. However, if you are happy with all of that, you can indeed move on to les pronoms complément d'objet indirect or les pronoms COI. And as I said in the direct objects video, this is a useful piece of terminology, particularly if you read your grammar in French, because you will see it an awful lot. Not surprisingly, indirect object pronouns replace the indirect object of a verb. The indirect object being the person or thing which is, well, indirectly affected by the action. As always, I think this is best explained with an example, so I am giving the gift to you. In this sentence, we do have a direct object, that is, the gift, because it is the thing that is being given. You, however, are still involved. You are quite literally at the receiving end of the action here. You are not the thing being given, but you are receiving it. So there is a link between you and the giving, albeit indirect. Similarly, you showed the film to us. The thing that was shown was the film, so it is the direct object. But we were the ones watching, and so we have an indirect link with the verb, and so we are the indirect object. And finally, she spoke to him. So in this case, we don't have a direct object, but you may have noticed by now there is one big clue in English as to whether something is a direct or an indirect object, and that is with indirect objects, we have the word to. It isn't always to. In English, it could be any number of prepositions, but there is a reason I'm sticking with to in this video. And so the indirect object pronouns in English are actually pretty simple. They're just the direct object pronouns with the word to or any other preposition in front of them. So to me, to you, to him, to her, to it, us, to you, to them. In French, though, we do have a new set of pronouns. However, most of them are actually the same as what we've already seen. So for the singulars, the first person is m or m apostrophe before a vowel or an h. And the second person singular is t or t apostrophe before a vowel or an H. So they are the same as the direct object pronouns. Third person singular ones though are different. We have lui and i. Lui refers both to masculine and feminine things and is generally used with people and living things, whereas i is gender neutral and refers to objects or ideas. For the plurals, the first and second person are the same as usual, nous and vous. And the third person plural is also different, and that is leur, regardless of the gender. So we only have three new pronouns here, so hopefully it's not too difficult to learn them. So the question is, when do we know when to use an indirect object pronoun in French? And the answer is that indirect object pronouns are used with verbs followed by a. Now I can already hear people saying it, how do I know when a verb's followed by a? And I'm sorry to say the only way we can know is by knowing, you have to learn whether a verb is followed by a, or de, or any other preposition. So my advice to you is to learn verbs with their prepositions. So for example, parler a is to speak to. As it happens, parler can be followed by other prepositions, but then of course the meaning changes. So just think of parler a as to speak to. Also, téléphoner a is to telephone. So in English we have a direct object, to telephone someone. In French, it is indirect. Literally, we telephone to someone. However, I tend to avoid direct translations like that because it just adds an extra step. Just remember that to telephone is téléphoner à. It all goes together in one. And finally, dire à is to say to or to tell. So, if I were to say je parle à Sophie, I am speaking to Sophie, but then I didn't want to keep repeating her name, I could say je lui parle. Parle. Literally, I to her speak. But again, avoid the direct translation. I am speaking to her. Finished. Tu téléphones à mes parents. À mes parents becomes leur, to them, to leur téléphone. And il dit à sa copine, he says to his girlfriend, becomes il lui dit. So you'll notice here we have a change of word order just like we did with the direct object pronouns. So when the indirect object is a whole noun, it comes after the verb, but when it is a pronoun, it comes before. And in fact, the rules for word order with C or E pronouns is the same as those 
for se or de. So let's have a reminder of those. In simple tenses, indirect object pronouns go before the verb. So we've already seen je lui parle, but we could also say il ne me téléphone jamais, he never calls me. Also, I think it's a good idea to note that the negative ne here comes before the pronoun. And to leur dira la vérité, you will tell them the truth. Literally, you to them will tell the truth. In so-called perfect tenses, that is tenses with an auxiliary verb and a past participle, indirect object pronouns, like direct object pronouns, go before the auxiliary. So, vous nous avez écrit, you have written to us, to write to someone is écrire à quelqu'un. Ils t'ont demandé, they asked you, to ask someone is demander à quelqu'un. So, although we can't actually tell the difference between the second person singular direct object and indirect object pronoun, because demander is followed by à, the T apostrophe here is indeed indirect. And on lui a pardonné, to forgive someone in French is pardonner à quelqu'un. And so, on lui a pardonné is we forgave him or we forgave her. And then finally, when the main verb is an infinitive, indirect object pronouns go before the infinitive. So, tu dois lui parler is you have to speak to him or you have to speak to her. Je vais leur expliquer la situation. I am going to explain the situation to them. And elle veut y réfléchir. She wants to think about it. To think about something or to reflect on something is réfléchir à quelque chose. Hence the use of y rather than le. In the direct object pronouns video, I also briefly touched upon past participle agreement, and we found out that past participles have to agree with direct object pronouns. They don't, however, agree with indirect object pronouns. So, for example, il lui a envoyé un message. Even if lui is to her, even if he sent a message to her, Envoyé will never have another E in this case because lui is indirect. Ils m'auront écrit. They will have written to me. Even if I were female, I would not say ils m'auront écrit because we écrire quelque chose à quelqu'un. And so the M apostrophe is indirect and there is therefore no agreement. And finally, je leur avais dit, so leur does refer to more than one person, but again, it is indirect, so there is no S at the end of D. Then, the only thing that remains to explain is what we do when we have both a direct object pronoun and an indirect object pronoun, and I'm afraid to say that the rules here are a little bit confusing. The first one is direct object pronouns come after first and second person indirect object pronouns. Now, I wrote that, and I know it's correct, but I don't really know what it means. You know, it, it doesn't really help. You know, if you told me that, I'd say, okay, that's kind of weird and long-winded. So, again, I think this is best explained with an example. And so, we have, il me le donne. They give it to me, or they are giving it to me. So, let's just have a look at the rule. Direct object pronouns come after first and second person indirect object pronouns. So, me, to me, is a first person indirect object pronoun, and therefore the le, which is a direct object, comes after it. So that does make sense, but for me it's far easier to think of a sentence like that, which I know is correct, and then apply that to other sentences, such as Elle nous l'a dit, or elle nous l'a dit, depending on what the L apostrophe stands for. For example, if she told us the truth, it would be elle nous l'a dit, because truth in French is la vérité, it is feminine. Therefore, the L apostrophe stands for la, it comes before the past participle, and so we have agreement. There isn't, however, agreement with the nous, because, of course, it is indirect. And finally, nous vous le dirons, we will say it to you. So again, let's look at the rule. We have vous, which is a second person plural indirect object pronoun, and that comes before our direct object pronoun, le. So we will tell it to you, nous vous le dirons. Rule number two is direct object pronouns come before third person indirect object pronouns. So we have il le lui prête. They are lending it to him or they are lending it to her. 
So in this case, we have the direct object pronoun first, that's the le, followed by the indirect object pronoun lui, before it was the other way around. We had the indirect object and then the direct. But because the indirect object here is third person, it comes after the C or D. Elle la leur a offert, she gave it to them. Notice that we have agreement here because the thing that is being given, i.e. the direct object pronoun, is feminine, and so we have agreement. Uh, we don't have agreement though with the leur because of course that is indirect, but regardless of all that, the word order is the same as the one above because we have a direct object pronoun and then an indirect object pronoun which is third person. And finally, je le lui dirai, I will say it to him, literally I, it, to him, will say, because again we have a third person indirect object, lui, and a direct object, and so the direct object has to come first. You may have noticed that over the past couple of minutes I've been saying a lot of words, because these require a lot of explanation. The rules, I think, are far too complex. They are correct, they are what they are, but I really don't think when you're speaking to someone this is something that you want to be thinking about. So use these examples which you know are correct and substitute the words when you want to say something different. But the word order will still be the same for any sentence which is structured in the same way. If you're having trouble with all of this word order stuff, fret not because there is an alternative. You could learn this little graphicy chart thing. And it demonstrates, quite simply, the order of pronouns, regardless of their function. So, me, te, se, nous, and vous always come first. So, whether me, te, nous, and vous are direct or indirect, they come first. Se is a reflexive pronoun, so if you want to know about those, watch my video on reflexive verbs. They will then be followed by le, la, or les. Then you have lui and leur then e, and then finally on. I haven't spoken about on in this video, but I do have a video on e and on if you want to know more about that. So what this demonstrates isn't that you always have to have all of these pronouns. You might not have a motor, se, nous, or vous. You might just have a le. That's fine. But if you have more than one, this is the order that they should go in. And then we have indirect object pronouns. There is quite a lot to think about, but don't worry, the more you do it, the easier it will get. If you have any questions, as usual, do not hesitate to ask, and until the next video, à bientôt.